Gaping Black by Avtar Simrit Read by the author Chapter 1 There's gotta be something totally wrong with me. I'm sitting on my bed and I swear to God my Tupac poster just winked at me. Am I going crazy? Or was that weed just that bomb? I chuckle to myself as I take a huge sniff, <sighs> letting wafts of smoke lazily curl out of my mouth. Delicious. The blunts that I roll? The best. Seriously, no one in my high school can roll better blunts than me. Who am I? I was getting to that. My name is Rob. Or Robert Blaggard, if you want to use my long-ass slave name. Like a normal 16-year-old kid who has no control over their own life, I go to the boringness of high school every day. That's why I smoke that bomb weed, even if it's just alone in my room with Tupac here. Tupac is the coolest because he raps and because he's black. Anything that's black is definitely where I want to be. There's this dude, right, who works at my school in the copy room, and he's black. I know. I can hardly contain myself, too. Fuck, I'm high. Staring up at Tupac's face on the poster, I look down at his bare torso and thug life tattoo on his stomach. That's hot, I gotta admit. You think if I smoke enough weed that he'll come out of the poster and start rapping? <laughs> Robert just likes gaping black asshole. My friend Mothman pokes fun at me the next day before class. We are sitting in our normal chill spot, which is a little alcove by the conference room. There is a water fountain here and we like to sit leaning against the wall like no good hooligans. I'm gangsta. Anyway... I push Mothman in his shoulder and say, You're such a faggot. You know you've been watching Snatch and drooling over Brad Pitt. And you say I'm the gay one. You are the gay wad. Mothman shoots back, smacking me hard in the balls. I double over in pain and squeak out, You're such a dick. We're not on an episode of Jackass, you sadist. I know. Mothman winks at me behind his wire rim glasses. I just like say, seeing you squeal in pain like the little pussy you are. You mother... I start, and then I'm cut off by my friend Terry, who's sitting on my other side. Girls, girls, Terry says, punching both of us in the legs, trying to give us Charlie horses. You're both a bunch of pussies, he laughs. Luckily, I yank my leg away just as he tries to punch me. Mothman isn't so lucky. Terry seems to be the most level-headed of my friends, but also sometimes the most out there. But sometimes I can feel him strongly and think he might be discontent about something. Well, I mean, who wouldn't, having to go to this hellhole of boring fuckdom every day? What are you gay lords arguing about, says Alex. He's our other friend. He's Mexican. Walking up, he tosses his backpack down in the corner. We were arguing over who got to spank your mom last night, Mothman snorts. Har har, Alex imitates a laugh sarcastically. We have quite a group of misfits, and before the first bell of the day rings, the last member of our twisted bunch arrives. He's tall, lanky, with a nose quite too big for his face. His arms seem to be freakishly long, and he wears baggy South Pole shirts because he likes to bite my style. But I don't fault him for it. I know I look cool. His name is Carl, with the buzz cut in his big ass nose. Kicking Terry in the bottom of his boot, Carl snaps at him as he itches his nose. You ready to go to Mr. Down Syndrome's class, bro? Terry groans. I hate that fucking class, and I hate that guy, he complains. Nonetheless, he drags himself to his feet and gives us the peace sign as he heads off with Carl toward physics. Damn. I really wish I could just ditch class and go get stoned. I turn to Alex and Mothman, who are zoning out, listening to music on their iPods. You guys just want to skip school and go blaze up in the forest preserve? I don't think I can take reading another word in a fucking textbook. Mothman shrugs sheepishly. I'm almost failing algebra, bro. Again. 
and my dad is threatening that if I get F's in any of my classes, that he would get me lobotomized. Harsh, bro, I say, then I turn to look expectantly at Alex. He shakes his head, too, saying, Man, I gotta make up for the P.E. I missed yesterday. I was in the bathroom all that period with the worst diarrhea. I think it was those intestine tacos my mom packed for me yesterday. I almost gagged thinking about it. Y'all motherfuckers are lame, I say. We'll go to boring school then. Chapter 2 I compromised my plan by ditching only last period. Hey, it won't hurt my GPA that much if I fuck off one stupid class. What the fuck is a GPA anyway? Do I need it? Fuck nah. Maybe I'll just drop out of school soon and get a job. But then what would my parents say? Maybe if I just float by, then when I get out of my frat years of college, my dad will hook me up with a job. Sounds awful. I'm walking down the path in the forest preserve next to my high school. It's quiet, except for the occasional hum of a car passing by on the main road. I'm just finishing up licking the sticky part of the joint paper. Rolled it perfect again. I put it in my mouth with a grin. Yes, I admit it. I'm such a stoner. But hey, ain't no other way to survive high school. After putting the joint between my lips, I slip my earbuds in so I can crank it to some nas. Mmm. While I'm silently mouthing the words to the rap, I light up so I can blaze like a champ. Too bad my buds didn't have the balls to ditch with me. After sucking the sweet smoke down to the lungs, I cough like a tuberculosis patient, spitting spittle all over the ground. I circle around the path in the middle of the forest preserve where there is a field of tall grass. My eyes suddenly feel itchy. As I go to rub them, smoke finds its way into my eyeballs, further intensifying the irritation. Then I see something, or I think I see something. A window made of black smoke is hovering in the air by the tall grass. Its surface is almost reflective like a mirror. I blink my eyes painfully, and a blurry image of a woman's thin face appears in the black thing. Her eyes are completely black. Without even a chance to study the image further, I am blindsided. This person hits me with their whole body full force, knocking me over onto a soft patch of greenery between the trees. At once I see it's Mothman, laying on top of me. He gives me a cheeky grin and starts kissing and licking the side of my neck. At first I'm disgusted. What are you doing? I shriek. We agreed no making out. Then my eyes roll up in my head for a second, and I let out a soft moan. Uh. Oh, you don't like it? Mothman whispers against my shivering skin. No, I... I can't finish the sentence because he's now fumbling with the button of my jeans, trying to get to the good bits. Closing my eyes, I surrender to the pleasure. Mothman pulls down my pants and boxers. My dick is already semi-hard from the foreplay and nibbles on the neck. I can tell he's drooling for the cock because when he puts it in his mouth, it's so juicy. His tongue just works and when he deep throats, the gagging feels so good on the tip of my cock. As I begin to feel the orgasm building in my balls, I pull my fingers through Mothman's hair. Then I press his head down hard on my throbbing cock, forcing him to take it deep in the throat. I feel the nut coming and yell out with orgasmic ecstasy as I feel the warm semen squirt into his greedy mouth. He gags at first, jerking around on my erection. Then he swallows my load like a champ. Slowly, Mothman runs his lips up my shaft and off the tip of my penis as I heave to catch my breath. I came so hard. Without warning, he pounces on top of me and kisses me hard on the lips. I can taste my own spunk on his tongue. That's what I call a close encounter, Brokeback Mountain style. Next time you can come into my gaping black, he chuckles, jumps up, and then dashes off without another word. I lay there panting. The force of the orgasm almost rendered my legs completely numb. They still tingle with the afterglow of that sloppy blowjob. My dick is becoming flaccid again and is curling itself down right under my belly button. A glistening shine of cum and Mothman's spit adorns my cock, balls, and abdomen. 
The sign of a good time. My face is hot with blush as I slowly pull my pants back up, covering up the indecent but delicious act. I'm high as fuck. But I wonder if I'll be able to find where the joint flew off to when Mothman knocked me over. Let's toke to the crooked cocks. Chapter 3 It's Friday and my parents are going to be gone tonight and won't be back until midday tomorrow. My buddies and I know what that means. Party in Rob's basement. And what happens in the basement stays in the basement. I told Mothman and Terry to meet me at my house at dark. Us three have kind of a tripod thing going. No use inviting Alex or Carl. They wouldn't be into it. The first one to show up is Mothman with a huge grin on his face. Sup my G? I say to him as I answer the door. We slap hands and bump fists. No smooching this time. We come in to chill in the living room until Terry gets there. Dude, you're never going to believe what I got for us tonight, Mothman says excitedly as he flops down lazily onto the couch. What is it? I ask, walking over toward him. He pulls out a Ziploc and unrolls it dramatically. Behold, Mothman says with flair. I squint at the bag. Are those portobellos, I say? Mothman snorts. <coughs> No, they aren't, numb nuts. Magic mushrooms to get you lifted. Yeah, yeah. Then he pulls out another rolled up Ziploc bag and drags it underneath his nose. And that bomb chronic. Yo, I say, getting even more excited. Bro, you went all out. We gonna have a night. Suddenly there is pounding at the door and a voice bellows. Let me in, it's the recto police. Prepare to be body cavity searched. Mothman and I look at each other and roll our eyes. Terry, we say in unison. We go over to the door to let him in. As I open the door, he rushes in and stands in the middle of the living room, rubbing his hands together. Lovely to see you boys, Terry says with a wide grin. He points to Mothman as I close and lock the front door. I see Mothman is going to be playing the junior suburban shaman tonight. Excellent. I walk over and stand next to Terry. That would be good medicine, I comment, especially since I had this freaky dream last night. Dream? What about? Terry asked. I shrug. It's like I'm running over a bunch of rooftops, and someone is chasing me with a chainsaw. Obviously, they're trying to kill me or something. That's creepy as fuck, Robert, Mothman chimes in. You must have been smoking some bad weed. I, on the other hand, have only the best blue dream for myself and my compatriots. We smoke only the finest weed in the Shire. You're such a nerd, Tara remarks. The highest elf at Comic-Con. That's me, Mothman chortles, grinning ear to ear. Shall we go down to the sex cave, I ask? There really isn't anything sexy about my basement. The floors are cold, hard, and gray, with only a few rugs scattered around. I supplement this with sleeping bags and fluffy comforters laid down on the floor in front of the couch. Yes, there is a couch and a small TV with all my Nintendo 64 games. The only other thing down in this basement is the washer and dryer, but that is on the other side of the stairs. It's not much, but we make it steamy if we can, and if we can't, then we settle for fun playing Mario Kart. As we all are getting settled in on the sleeping bags, Mothman is finishing rolling up a blunt and putting it behind his ear. Terry is sitting with his legs splayed out, already opening his pants. Let's blast off, Mothman says as he puts a handful of shrooms in Terry's hand and then in mine. Taking a seat on the sleeping bags, I feel a shiver run up my spine. The gaping black is calling my name to come sing into the void. Looking down at the mushrooms in my hand, I wonder if I'm tripping already just from touching them. To finding new heights and gaining knowledge toward what all of this bullshit actually means, Terry says, toasting with his shrooms. I don't know what to say, so I blurt out, To surrendering to the blackness! Terry smiles at me and then shovels the shrooms into his mouth. As he chomps away, Mothman and I feast on the strange earthly flavor, which is dry-ass mushrooms as well. How long until it kicks in? 
Terry asks, because I'm so horny right now. I don't know if I can wait until it kicks in. He slides his hand down into his unbuttoned pants. Seeing him touch himself is turning me on. It's going to be a while, Mothman answers, so we might as well get our sex juices going, heighten that sexual energy toward powerful magic. I will be your shaman on this sexy vision quest. He is now quickly unbuttoning his own pants. It doesn't take long for all three of us to get naked. We're all fully hard, stroking our cocks as we stare at each other, as we all give pleasure to ourselves. That's so hot to me. Our mouths are hanging open with panting breaths. I don't really know how much time has transpired, but I swear I feel the high of the mushrooms creeping up my spine. We are a pyramid, Mothman says, getting up to his knees and moving toward the middle of the room. Terry and I get on our knees also, meeting Mothman in the center. We are all kneeling facing each other, vigorously jerking our hard, horny pricks like our lives depend on it. Slowly our foreheads seem to magnetize together, and before I know it, all three of our heads are together. Oh, I feel that shit. I say, feeling the trip hit me hard like a psychedelic wave of rainbow unicorns. All three of us laugh. As I look up at them, I gasp, for I see a wash of bright color. Around Terry is a bright aura of white. Around Mothman is a bright aura of orange. And around me looks like an aura that is flickering back and forth between black and blue. Do you see this shit, guys? Mothman asks. I know I'm the one supposed to be leading you on this journey, but damn, I be tripping balls. Oh, I see it, Terra responds quietly. It's like an aura. I see you guys as auras. Me too, I agree. Mine is flickering black and blue. Trippy shit, man. Keep jerking your peckers, guys, Terry commands. I'm having a moment here. It's building. I start jerking my cock more frantically. It's all I can do to not come already. The orgasm keeps building and building in my balls and my spine. My eyes suddenly bug out because I see a white spiral of light coming out of Terry's chest. There's one coming out of Mothman's chest that's orange. And yep, sure enough, there's a spiral of black and blue light coming right from my ribcage area. I can see that the orgasms are building up in my two friends as well. Visually, I can see their sexual energy in their bodies. And there is this golden light that comes out of the top of their head and circles around like a halo. I'm so close, I groan. Terry throws up a hand. We're the Trimurti, he says. His eyes shoot open and his iris and pupils look exactly like mystical melting clocks. Terry concludes by saying, We give birth to the Tri-Devi! In the exact moment that Terry says the last weird-ass word, we all come ejaculating hard into the center of our pyramid. The colors of our auras instantaneously become a tornado. White, blue, black, and orange swirl together like a vortex of queer erotic rainbows. Just as fast as the color storm comes, it subsides. There is an ocean of semen in the center of our tripod. Our Trimurti, as Terry just called it. We busted a nut and impregnated the New Age, Mothman says, his eyes rolling up in his head until I can only see the whites. We gave birth to the New Age, Terry concurs with his version. We helped bring to an end the outdated ways of the old age, I add. We are all sitting back on our butts now, feeling tired from the sexual exertion. We were just waiting patiently for the past to die, Terry says sleepily. His eyes blink a couple times, then close as he lays down on the sleeping bag. Just as quickly as mine and Mothman's heads are on the sleeping bags, the dream is over. Chapter 4 From the blissful emptiness of the void, something calls me back. Maybe it is that oh small voice in the back of the soul known as hip-hop. I awake as if wading through a pool of rainbow-colored semen. It's thick and slimy as I make my way toward the stairs that lead up from the basement. The stairs seem to have morphed into a slide that has now morphed into a tongue. 
I'm on my hands and knees now, trying to get upstairs, but the lapping tongue seems to be slowing my progress. Staring up at the open doorway at the top of the flapping tongue, a horse's head whinnies and comes into view. No, it's not a horse. It's a pink unicorn. This unicorn points its horn down toward me, and it stretches out like the arms of a Stretch Armstrong doll. Grasping onto the Laffy Taffy unicorn horn, I try to walk up the tongue staircase like trying to go back up a very fast-moving water slide. Finally, I wriggle up all the way using my boner for support as I go. Good thing I always go naked at these vision quest parties. Once I'm on the ground floor of my own house, the pink unicorn farts and disappears in a puff of stardust. I crawl my way to the second flight of stairs and make it in a slog up to my bedroom at last. It is my noble sir, Tupac, who has called me forth from the rivers of Fungi Star Missions. Sitting on my bed, I study the poster. I study the still face of Tupac Shakur, depicted on glossy paper. He winks at me, then flicks his tongue out. I jump back, scared there might be a poltergeist in my poster. Then I hear the voice of Roger Troutman saying, California love. That is the secret code, and now I know there is an intergalactic mission that involves something about epic proportions. I almost shit myself as Tupac's whole body starts to move. He turns until his back is fully toward me. The waistband of his boxers is quite higher than the waist of his jeans, but no matter. In a second, the jeans are dropped, then the boxers are down, and I am staring at a round ass the color of dark chocolate. Without a second to relish the moment, Tupac bends over and spreads his cheeks. It's almost as if I'm looking directly into the sun. The beauty is resplendent. His anus suddenly dilates, becoming a gaping black vortex. I can almost see wisps of purple swirling around within the spinning energy of the rectal portal. The feeling is like I'm being drawn by a magnet toward Tupac's gaping black anus. It wants me inside. He wants me inside. The blackness wants me inside, and I am a slave to the black. My pupils must be enormous, mimicking the gaping black abyss I see before me. It's almost as if staring into Tupac's rectum can suck me through the sphincter of my own pupils. Too late now. I'm so close to the poster that I'm almost one with it. Then my head goes into his asshole. My mother said never go ass to mouth. But for Tupac, you have to make an exception. After my head is encapsulated, the gaping black vortex of the rectum sucks the rest of my body into itself like a reverse birth. The spinning black energy of the portal has now become a tunnel. It reminds me of the astral version of a colon leading up into the multiversal intestinal tract. The time-space shit shoot dumps me out into somewhere where gravity is lower. I come down slowly onto the dusty ground. I almost shit down my naked legs when I open my eyes to witness the earth fathoms in front of me in space. Taking a deep panic breath, I realize that I'm on the moon completely butt-ass freeballing. Holy shit, I can breathe. Fuck me, I'm alive, I say out loud. This is the craziest shit ever. Am I dreaming? Am I dead? I can breathe, though. Of course you can breathe, numbnuts, a voice says from over to my left. It's a girl's voice. She continues by saying, You're tripping your shrunken balls off right now. Finally, I see who's talking. She's a girl, probably about my own age. She's thin, wearing a long nightgown, and has long stringy brown hair. Where the fuck are we? I sputter. And what the fuck is that? I point to a large black pyramid erected in the dusty surface of the moon. The girl puts a hand up. The point is, she says, you're dead. Or you will be. Or you were. I don't all that quite matter like a mad hatter, you see. What? I ask since I didn't follow any of that. The girl in the nightgown looks down at the earth. Sometimes you're dead. And sometimes you're alive, she says. What's really the difference? 
You could be alive for a while and then find yourself dead. Then a small moment later, you'll be alive again. It's all very confusing. What's with a state of being? Maybe once you're being, then you're always being. She trails off. Is there an anus of the universe? I mumble, staring down at the earth again too. Oh, there's definitely an anus to the universe, the girl says confidently, but it always shits you out exactly where you are. I nod, and as I do, there's a deafening farting noise that seems to shake the whole cosmos down to its very tachyons. Then the anus of the universe shits me out exactly where I am, in my basement, on the cum-soaked sleeping bags. Hearing the commotion, Mothman blinks his eyes and sits up groggily. There's a drip of dried and crusty jizz coming down the corner of his mouth. Terry sits up too, his shaggy black hair sticking up in every direction like he's had the longest night of rough sex. Oh, oh man, Terry says. Last night must have been so gay.